Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another episode of 31 Days of Halloween. Today we are talking about We Need to Do Something, a 2021 horror movie that is available on Hulu. Uh, it stars Sarah McCormick, Vanessa Shaw, Lizette Oliveira, Pat Healy, and John James Cronin. I am reading, I am reading the, uh, I'm, I'm a little confused here because I'm reading the IMDb here and it says that Ozzy Osbourne's in this movie. If he is, I completely missed it. But anyways, on with the review. Now, We Need to Do Something is a movie that is very, very simple. It is like The Shining, but condensed down to the minute details. Um, and that's something that I did not like about the movie because of the predictability, but I will get to that in a second. It's a family of four that are stuck in a bathroom together after uh, some kind of storm, hurricane, something. Uh, minor spoilers here, but there is some, I, I guess you want to say supernatural aspect of it, or it's a creature feature without creatures. I know that's weird, but yeah, that's that that's what we're getting here. Um, the, these four people get stuck in this bathroom because during the storm, a tree falls on the house, lands up against the bathroom door. We're going to talk about that next. Uh, lands up against the bathroom door, and they cannot open up the bathroom door, so they are stuck. Uh, no one's answering their phones. One person's phone is dead. Uh, there's some, there's a plot point with uh, the oldest daughter's phone uh there's some stuff going on but it kind of took me completely out of the movie and yes i am the same guy that said let fiction be fiction i have never been to a bathroom bathroom stall a restroom anything where the doors did not open inward now that is a very small complaint but it's still a complaint because it just it didn't feel realistic now are there bathrooms out there where the doors open outward of course there are but I've never seen them. In fact, I had to go look up if there were bathrooms and this sometimes, but usually it's not a, what well, not a manufacturing error. It's an installation error when the door opens outward for a bathroom and not inward, and that keeps you from swinging the door outward. There's a whole reason for this. It keeps you from swinging the door outward in the hallway and hitting somebody or blocking the blocking the hallway, whatever. Um, but anyways, okay. So minor complaint. Uh, my next complaint would be. The absolutely comedic villain, villainy, vil, villainery, whatever. The, uh, the 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 father is the bad guy. Like I said, it's The Shining. The the father, played by Pat Healy, is is of course just like Jack Torrance. You know, the he's an alcoholic. There's so many reused tropes in this. You have the uh, the gay teenage daughter who cuts um, that stuff. It's just, you know, it's like one stereotype and trope after another. So I didn't care too much for that. Um, there's a, a bunch of coincidental stuff that goes on in there to try and keep up the tension, which I kind of rolled my eyes at, but it is what it is. Uh, at the end of the day, I thought it was okay. Now, for a movie, I am going to give it three stars out of five because I enjoyed it enough to keep watching. There were several eye roll moments uh, when certain characters did and said certain things. Um, you even have the, the the dream sequences, that kind of stuff. Um, it's it, There's just a lot here that it's not that it didn't need to be there. It's just that it was not as entertaining as it might have been. And watching The Father, Pat Healy was doing an okay job there at first, but then he just became comedically evil to the point of, you know, he might as well have been like Dick Dastardly twirling his mustache kind of thing. There is one part of the movie that I like a lot, and that is, I'm going to call it the Cujo moment. If you know, you know. Um, but uh, that, that scene was very powerful. I did enjoy that. Um, the... <sighs> I, I, I want to say more positive about this. It's very well shot. Um, it's I, I did like... Uh, uh, with Bird Box, I had a minor uh, criticism with that one. With uh, not showing the, the creatures with, or, or whatever it is. That kind of thing. And everybody disagrees with me. Trust me, I know I'm wrong. But that's how I felt about Bird Box. In this one, I thought it was... Okay, this is minor spoilers again. 
I thought it was good this time that we did not see anything outside of the bathroom. The movie starts with them walking into the bathroom and you never get outside whatsoever. You have no, well, I, I take that back. There is a flyover at the beginning and some stuff with the storm coming off and coming out in the distance. But I thought it was really good that they didn't show. It, it did manage to give moments of tension, especially the very last scenes. Okay, the very last scene made me laugh because the actress who played the mother uh, did, a, did a really good job, but also it was kind of on the silly side. So if this was actually supposed to be a horror comedy, I think they nailed it. I think they really killed it. But I don't think it was. I think it's supposed to be a, a horror a horror thing. But if anybody wants to tell me that this is a horror comedy and can prove where like the director or the writer said it was a horror comedy, I, I will completely take it back and I'll even bump it up a star. But I was going in expecting just a plain horror movie. And what I got was laughable at times. Um, and I don't feel like it was intentional, but it might have been. I don't know. This is one of the, the problems with horror comedies is I don't know if I'm supposed to be laughing at certain things. Unless you have something obvious like Shaun of the Dead which is you know amazing or the other ones that kind of keep keep it right on the line and still work like Malignant Malignant is 100% batshit crazy and it works in as both a comedy and a horror movie but it's not a horror comedy I don't think with this one it feels like it wants to be taken seriously but I couldn't um the the little boy who played Bobby uh I think the dialogue that was written for him was absolutely perfect he plays that just like a little kid and I was very attached to the kids in this movie because my kids are roughly the same well not roughly the same age but uh, both of my kids are about uh, that far apart they're seven years apart and the mother's stories that she kept telling Bobby about uh, you know being pregnant with him I thought that was super endearing and I absolutely loved that so that's why I'm at three stars with this one even though some things made me made me chuckle where they probably shouldn't have uh i i'm still i'm still of the the party that it is still a good movie and i'm sure that p there's going to be people out there who absolutely love it so if you're looking for something that is like the shining but r in a really really small package like really crammed in to just one area like if the shining never left room 237 i'm gonna get this wrong i know i am i know it's 217 in uh in the movie no it's 237 in the movie it's 217 because 2 plus 17 is 19 and that's king's whole thing with 19 anyways i just nerded out on you i'm sorry this isn't a stephen king video but yeah, that's where I'm at with it. It is a very condensed The Shining. Uh, and I, okay, one last thing. I thought it would be extremely funny. Uh, and this is has nothing to do with the movie. This is my own brain going, this would be hilarious if this happened. If the final scene of the movie, after everything that happened, if they ended up getting rescued, and the people who rescued them is like, what happened? It's only been two days. I thought I, I think that would have been hilarious. But anyways, have you watched We Need to Do Something? If so, let me know what you thought of it down there in the comment section or the doobly-doo. Let's bring that back for good. How about that? Let me know what you thought about the movie down there in the doobly-doo. But until next time, I have been E, you've been you. This has been another movie review and an episode of 31 Days of Halloween. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.